good evening everyone and welcome to Art of India by Times of India, powered by the Usher Group. Photography is a visual representation of culture and has long been regarded as a powerful art form. At Avid Learning, we have constantly engaged with this vertical and explored emerging trends in the field, the latest being artificial intelligence. From removing an image's background to improving how a photo looks with just one click, to creating award-winning masterpieces, AI is here and is only going to get bigger and better. Today's session will explore how AI is changing the world of photography with award-winning photographer Vikram Bhava, presented by Avid Learning. Vikram Bhava is a professional photographer for the last two decades and has won multiple national and international awards. He was the first Indian photographer to promote and showcase 3D photography in 1998 and created the first 3D covers in India for L and other magazines in year 2000. Vikram has constantly been pushing the boundaries of photography by experimenting with new ideas and techniques as in and is in limelight for pushing the acceptability of the art and creative in the country. Today, he has promised us to share his AI works for the first time and we can't wait to see them. Over to you, Vikram. Hi, everyone. Thank you for being here. Thank you. So I'm just going to run through a small video. I hope it plays properly, but yeah, here we go. It's fine whenever the sound comes. So these are, you know, uh, a mixture. So because there are images which could be AI, could not be AI. So it'll be great to know who can guess what, which. So how many of you guys over here playing with AI? Anyone? Okay, not yet. Did anyone recognize anything over here? Any other pictures? Any other places? <laughs> no. <laughs> the idea is to understand really how far AI has come. It's like astonishing. That's some of the pictures that I have shot. Now when I see AI, they say, this doesn't look good, you know? And this looks like AI, and the AI looks real. Actually, like today I was shooting and I was with an agency, and they're looking at some of the pictures, I was just showing them and I was doing the same guessing game. And they're like, yeah, hey, iska lighting thik nahi hai. And that was my picture, right? <laughs> and the AI was, iska lighting is very good. So I was like, yeah, that's the future. <laughs> And a lot of pictures over here, uh, so like any other thing like in photography, uh, even AI is a photography, if you want to call it, like, you know, you're creating something and it needs retouching. Like, maybe less than what I shoot at times and maybe more. So, I would say 99% of the pictures here are untouched, they're not retouched, because uh, in the last one year I've created 6,000 images. If I had to retouch even 10% of that, that's like immense amount of money which uh, for me is just an experiment right at the moment. A few clients I worked with. So I think I'll just stop this. Oh, you won't, yeah, so. Sorry? Seem? AI. Which ones? Tell me which is AI. No, that's, a, that's the thing. See, even like the picture that just went by, that was not AI. The beauty picture that just stopped when I just stopped it. That's not AI. So, I'll, I'll show you. Actually, this is a nice name in the sense, a positive name, the next chapter in photography. The one I chose was photography is dead. I truly believe 
traditional photography as we know it has two years or three years max. Uh, in terms of, uh, let's say in the commercial world, uh, in the art world, I would say it's an asset if you use it well. Uh, in terms of uh, smaller photographers who do like products, uh, food, you know, they're finished. They, I mean, there will be niches, there will be things you can do, but traditional photography in a big way is going to die. Like iPhone killed photography for us. For commercial photographers, suddenly, you know, lifestyle photography was dead because you could just go with the phone. Journalists like New York Times, they threw out all the journalists and they handed an iPhone to all the people and said, you have to shoot, you have to write. If you can't do both, you're out. So, you know, the same way we'll have something like this happening. Uh, my journey uh, started um, a year, year and a half back. I'm a tech geek. I, you know, I've done tech reviews. I love tech, cars, you know, typical boy, if you want to call it. Uh, so, I love to learn things. And when I exp started experimenting, it was not that great. Like this is a year and a half back. For me, this is not that great. Uh, but I was fascinated. Uh, so I'm fascinated by people. I'm a people's photographer, fashion photographer, if you want to call it. But for me, uh, there's been, always been a dream to travel the world and shoot people, different type of people. Like I'm fascinated with each and I, if, if you know, someone would say, Vikram, I'm going to pay you or not pay you or give you a project and I have to shoot one portrait with all of you guys dressed up, I would do it right now. Instantly, like I did someone, something for another friend of mine, something similar, like there's a series, I've done something similar, he styled, I shot. It's fascinating for me, people are fascinating, for the stories, the way, you know, what I talk, what I see, and I'm a very emotional person. When I meet someone or I talk to someone, I sort of connect on their level, I sort of draw energy from them. If I don't meet people for a few days, I'm the crankiest person around because I have no energy to draw, like, you know. So for me, when I started, this was the first image, if you want to call it, in AI, where I wanted to shoot different people from different countries. And I started working and I wanted to see if it works. So I put one year, it was there in the series, we can show it later again. So this was basically like, you know, so you can say Indians, Afghanistanis, Russians, rustic, not dressed up in their element, if you want to call it. So this is a huge series which I started and I went mad. I remember three nights, three days, I did not sleep. I was just doing this. I wanted people. I, I made like 300 AI images in those three, three days. Like, okay, so moving on from my journey, uh, some images from some of the shoots behind the scenes. AI or real, I don't know. Which one? But all AI, right? Guys? Which ones? Okay, and here, one on the left or the right? Go on, but these are fake, there's nothing real over here. I just created a behind the scene to show for the real image that I can make here. Yeah, this is the real image. So these are all fake, like technically. <laughs> so AI, and these are untouched, not, I've not done anything to make them look like traditional photography. I just took it, made it, put it up for this session, like, you know. So, okay, which one? Light. Light is the real one, right? Or the AI one? Okay, left one is real. Very good. And, but you know how the AI made my, the right one? So the right one is AI, you're right. If I had worked on it, photoshopped it, toned it, you wouldn't come to know. Because there's too much color, there's less color. If I reduced the color, maybe done some graining, you wouldn't know. But I left it like that. And what I did was, for this session, I didn't give AI this picture. So I have this series on my website. It's all over the internet, you know, different places, Google, this, that. So I have a series of a boy standing like that in a different space. And I gave that picture to AI and I said fashion photography with this reference image in Vikram Bhava style. So what it did was, it found my style, it picked up that picture, it took the, you know, image of the boy I had given him, who was standing like that, mixed the two and made a new picture and gave me. It's fascinating, no? It made the background also sort of similar like what, I mean, 
no one needs me, you know. You bring, bring that, you can just type Vikram Baba fashion photography and you'll get some picture in my style and I'll be, dude, I'm done. <laughs> so it's, it's fascinating and scary at the same time. Again, It's like, which one looks better? I'm not going to say which is AI, which one looks better? The one on the right, right? Anyone? Everyone? That's AI. See, left is mine, I'm done. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> so I gave it my left picture, and I said lifestyle image, reference to this, with three girls, whatever, and I put the, you know, time of the day as afternoon and this, and it created that picture. So there are two ways to do it. You can talk to it and tell him what you want. So it, it's like, see, from a layman's point of view, you may say, I want a Porsche in a city. It'll give you something, but it won't know how to light it. It'll just give you what it feels like. Now, if I wanted my style, then I have to tell it what to light it like. Or I give him a reference, and I said, this is my reference, I want you to use this reference and now build on it. Then I can keep changing it, tweaking it. The AI, the bot. So there are many channels. There are many channels, there are many platforms now, AI platform, there's something called Mid Journey, Stable Diffusion, Dali, 10 other, Leonardo, lots of people have come up with lots of AI platforms. And you can technically create your own AI platform if you want today. And you can talk to the bot, you can tell the bot what you want. It'll tell you this picture is not allowed. This is nudity. This is sexual. This is not allowed. You can't do these. These words are not allowed. So you have to keep working on your instructions. See, I'll tell you what. Okay, le let's move forward. We'll, we'll get back to all this. This is like, okay. So you, again, you saw like, you know, what AI does. It can ruin the photographer's life. Okay. But does AI make anyone an artist? That's a question I've been asked many, many times. And I think, yes. How good or bad, though, it's like canvas and paint, no? It, that's, but yeah, I mean, it, it's insane what you can get out of it, because today, anybody can be an artist, uh, in a way, because a lot of us may have thoughts, ideas, or we may not have the technique. So the AI is just a tool, technically, if you can use the tool the way you want it, so, and take it forward. But it's always going to be human-based. Of course, of course. But then I have to hire the model, I have to hire the location, I have to get him the clothes, I have to get the model, makeup, I have to get everything. So basically, for me, as a professional photographer, AI is a free production house, not a free. I mean, there are free versions, there are paid versions. I'm on a paid version. Because... But imagine the... Of course, but you would never be able to create what the type of stuff you can on AI. Oh, okay, I'll tell you what. You have Photoshop and other stock libraries. You want to make a spaceship landing at Taj Mahal. How easy is it for you? Not easy. You'll need a spaceship ka photo, na? You'll have to describe, na? This dude can do it. <laughs> Simple things. So, in fact, Photoshop just took out something called Firefly day before yesterday, which is their AI tool. Basically, what they're saying is, we now have AI, Firefly, you can create whatever you want, you don't need to be a photographer. It's a journey which is happening and it will change the industry in a huge way within the next one, two years, so trust me, it'll be very different. Where we are coming to with AI, like, you know. So, we can go over the questions. No, I refuse to save money for the magazine. <laughs> you know, but yeah, I mean, it depends. I can't get a Deepika Padukone on AI, you know, and put her up on your cover. You can put the picture I create with her. I've already created a series, okay? But you can't use it without her permission. 
You understand? So that, that, that's what I said. The first people is going to hit is pro uh, product photographers, food photographers, you know, stuff like that, industrial photographers, that type of stuff. Then when it comes to lifestyle, you know, um, up to a point, when it comes to celebrities, it'll take a while because celebrities won't give permission. Yeah, but be too suppose you do a beautiful job and she says, fine, go ahead, Vikram, I love it. Then she has to pay me now. Then you're not still getting it free for your magazine. Okay, so you're looking at it as a new sort of channel of creativity itself, by itself. It is, it is a, it is a channel of creativity itself mm. and it supports your photography also. I mean, I'll give you an example. Let's say I want to make a film, right? I'm, I need some big background, beautiful backgrounds. Now, now when we shoot film, you have to either project or make sets or something like that. Now I can just create what I want on AI, use it as my backplate. Even in your Photoshop, use it as my backplate. Mm -hmm. right? right? So it's like you, it both cases work. You can either create any elements without going to a 3D artist like car shoots. You saw the car pictures, right? Yeah. Right now what, like for example, uh, my nephew works with Volvo. Mm. What, what his job is? They give him a design of the next car which is coming out after five years. His job is to put it in the system, make it look real, light it, put it in different locations. And uh, then we start seeing ads on the hoardings. That's what he does. You know, it takes him hours, days, months. First, they have to get a cat design, give it to him. Basically, the engineers work on a design, give it to him, puts it together, months. All I have to do is I have to feed in and say, I want this car to look like this, I want to do this. Of course, it's not five minutes. It could take me one day, two day, five day, ten days, but it'll still be worth the money, money. Yeah. you know, and it's so real. And this is me without doing anything. This is like not even the latest generation AI that I worked on those cars. The latest generation AIs are insane, like, you know, sure. and by the next, uh, like Microsoft's come up with something called Jack, Chat GPT, I think, I don't know, a lot of people know. Yeah. Yeah. So you have a paid version also, and uh, you can you know, get your codes, your prompts, whatever you need for your AI, which are much better than what I would sit down and take hours to do. So, you know, AI is taking over every facet. Videos, now they've come up with something where I can try, you know, just talk and say, I want a bird flying and a man running on the beach, you know, uh, it should be in Sicily and stuff like that. And you have a video. You have a video, a real life video. It's crazy. I mean, of course, it's not at the level of 100% what you would want to see on a theater screen, but on TV you wouldn't come to know. On Instagram you wouldn't come to know. Mm, on YouTube don't, you wouldn't come to know. Like a lot of channels that I watch on YouTube, uh, YouTube for AI when I want to learn anything, they are 100%. Okay, so I have this huge, you know, question answers which I prepared for today. <laughs> okay, what you guys may ask and stuff like that. <laughs> Page one, page two, page three, page four. All the AI has given me answers. <laughs> I told the AI I need five positive, five negatives or using AI in photography, it gave me some quick answers. I, so I didn't like half of them. I said, can you elaborate? It gave me five more answers. I said, no, I want something like this. It gave me some more answers. Then I asked it something. He like, I'm a language model. I can't tell you everything. <laughs> <laughs> you see, but I mean, so, and you can do it on the phone today. You just need paid accounts. You need to be a creator. Sometimes they want to verify you're a genuine person. Sometimes you use it for the wrong things, they'll block you instantly. Because they don't want it going in the wrong hands also. So AI is the future not only for photography, I feel it's everywhere from computing to art to photography. Uh, you know, you can make websites in like 30 seconds or 40 seconds. Coded websites on AI today. And this is just the tip of the iceberg if you're talking about the art market. You know, so, and What do you mean by commercial art? So, commoditized commercial art, that too, not even. So, when you're saying in the fashion photography realm mm. or human photography, you said Deepika cannot be displaced because you need the rights. So, commodity means any other fashion model who's not a name. Giant so, okay. Shoot can be replaced okay, in this. Okay, okay. So, let me. Uh, I'll do what I'll get out of this and come back to my images. I'll show you some images. And. Okay, this is a shoot in Adhataj. Mahal, right? You see the model. 
I need to take permission from her, I need to take rights from her and all that stuff. I can't uh, display the pictures or I can't use them without paying her. Oops, that's my wallet. Okay, this is the model, again, shot at the Taj. Thank you, yeah. Okay, see the AI, right? You put her up in Google, you won't find her. So you don't even need a model, you, when you're talking about commodity, you don't even need a real life model to copy. AI makes models in such an insane way that you will put it on Google search, you will not find them. So you, even that, you don't need real life models to copy. So commodities, lifestyle, you name it. Everything can be now replicated new, 100% new. Everything. Everything. And the fog, and the lighting, and the sand, and the water, and the sun in the background. And it didn't take me like, you know, hours and hours like it does on 3D. It just took me a little while because now I'm becoming better at creating. So for me, what it would take you as a layman would take maybe two, three days to get this. I get it in five minutes maybe. Because I've been doing it for a year. So I'm just understanding how it understands me, what to tell it to get me the, something that I want. You know, so then I can build a story for myself. I can build a story. <laughs> Don't look so shocked, man. You look like what happened to you. <laughs> Fantastic. No, but my still other earlier point was I was saying commodity commercial art versus fine art from a different context. Fine and art is something yeah. different. Yeah. What, what do you mean by fine art can't be co created? No, so let, I'll take a language example. Like how ChatGPT told you it's a finally a language translator. Yeah. So language is known to us and various tools for hundreds of years. But still somebody who, like a Ghalib wrote a particular poem, I can't write better than him even now. With you all like the ballet? <laughs> yes. No, no, but what I'm saying is that the tool cannot spur creativity, original content beyond a point. It can give me a lot of assistance in creating But nothing can, create, nothing can create on its own. No, it's like us. We go to school to learn art to come back with it and create a style. Same way with AI. We go to AI, which is a school where we train ourselves on how to use the tool, which is called AI, and then create on our thought process, our style. It cannot, see, it will give you a generic output. Okay, I mean, it can copy. If I say I want, you know, a painting in the style of Brinda Miller, but it will give you something. Obviously, it's not her work. That's plagiarism. Right? That it can do very well because it doesn't differentiate between copying and creating. But if you want to create your own stuff, then you have to put your own style in it. answer this gentleman. So Vikram is absolutely right. Today, whether it is industrial automation, customer service, art, or writing uh, responses to, uh, to customer, what do you say, uh, response sites, there are whole departments called prompt engineering. Yes. They are taught only how to write prompts, the creativity, the technicality, the protocols, and the modalities. So to answer your question, there is a whole new subsector called prompt yes. engineering. And the prompt engineering fine tunes your thought processes so that your fine tuned thought processes exponentially fine, fine tunes the bots' uh, processes. So, across sectors, prompt engineering, and it's coming to such a level where it's called uh, less code, no code uh, coding. Whole batches of code already written, then you just tweak it here and there. After some time, coders will not be required. So, yeah. prompt engineering is. The, as he said, if there is a threat, once prompt engineering enters every sector, you'll require no one to answer health yeah. queries, education queries, nothing. So yeah, I mean, after a while, I could just tell it like, you know, I want three models, you know, driving a Vespa uh, in Italy, on the streets of Italy, yellow color Vespa or something like that. And what is stopping AI from uh, doing that? Right? See? Yeah. So, so yeah, so I mean, see, that's what I said in the start. Now, it's always going to be the person who talks to the AI. It's always going to be your style, your statement. See, I'll tell you what, like the pictures of the Taj that I have. Now, I went to the Taj uh, like maybe 10 years back or something. And if anybody has gone to the Taj Mahal, you know, in the last 20 years, you're not allowed to go to the Yamuna side. 
okay? You can only go to the main side with crazy amount of security. Yamuna side, they have military, they have barricades, they have barbed wire. So when I went there, it's just by chance that uh, I walked into the space, uh, to the hotel. I love to drive, so I was driving around the country. And so when I came back to Agra by car, you know, people met me in the middle of the night, two o'clock, because we were looking for a hotel to stay at two in the morning in Agra. And you know, it's not like Bombay. Everybody was sleeping, and the best place in any small city or town in India, if you want to find a place to stay, is go to the railway station. So we went to the railway station. We asked around, "Koi jagah hai rehne ke liye?" And he said, "Ye jagah hai, 200 rupees ka room." He said, "Koi nahi, ab kider se aaya?" I said, "Bombay se aaya." So Bombay se drive kar gaya. You know, so usually it became a conversation point. The next morning, that I mean, the, that day we stayed in the day. We went for the day visit, and I've always been fascinated to go there from the Yamuna side because I went there when I was a kid with my parents. At that time, there was no such thing that you can't go. So I was with my two buddies, and I said, "Let's go." You know, so we ended up going to the Yamuna side at four in the morning. I wanted to see the sunrise. And when I went there at four in the morning, the military was there. We couldn't go ahead. And I started pleading, begging, trying everything with the military guys, like you know, to go in with three guys, Bombay se aaya, gumna ye wo, nothing doing. And this guy comes over there. Some guy on a cycle comes and chai is giving to all the army guys. And these guys, winter it was. They're taking a shower over there with that nalka, Indian nalka, whatever, and he was giving them chai. They were taking a cold water bath in the open area, having the hot tea. And I was still begging over there. I was just sitting, I said, I was waiting. Let them finish the shower, let them have their tea. I want to go. I want to check pictures. And that guy said, Are you here? I didn't recognize him. You were looking at the station. I must have asked him for the way. So the military guy said, Do you know him? No, sir, he came from Bombay. He was looking at the hotel at night. Then that guy said, Achha, you know, see, see, because they scared something may happen. I could be lying. So when it was sort of like a collaboration, and that is when we, the military guy started talking and told us that all the villages around Taj Mahal are there. You can say spies, khabari, whatever you want to call them. Then they said, Achha, kya karega? I shot some photos. I showed him all my trip ka photos. He said, Theek hai, jao ab. We went. I stayed there from 4.30 in the morning till two in the afternoon, shooting the Taj, from the Yamana side. I shot 6,000 images, just shooting the Taj. I never processed them. I mean, they're still sitting in my dabba because there were too many, but the lighting was exactly what I created. And I've always wanted to go there with a the model. I've gone with a friend to shoot, but I don't have pictures which are that stunning. So AI just gave me the route, so I knew the lighting. The point is, as a photographer, I knew the lighting I'd seen. I knew the fog, I saw the landscape, I saw what the Taj looked like. So when I spoke to my AI, I told the AI what I want. Like you said, the AI is only going to deliver what I will do. I, AI can't, if I tell it Taj Mahal, foggy day, it'll give you some rubbish picture. White Taj with fog. I, I've got Taj pictures which have red minarets. Taj doesn't have red minarets, it's black minarets, red minarets, six minarets. You know, full river, if I say Yamuna side, one river is there. River, sometimes it's floating in the river like a boat. You know, so it's as good as, so it's a tool. We can't be scared of it. Like I get a question last like today I was shooting with one of the biggest agents, not one, the biggest agency in the country. And the creative directors, please don't show this to clients. They won't come for shoots. See, a client comes to an agency, he says shoot karna hai, 10 lakh ka shoot hai, the agency gets a commission. Right? Their shoots will die. The commissions will die. They say, please don't show it. The client was also sitting there. They don't show it. They'll say, Isko shoot karo, ye karo. See, there's a limit to how long we'll keep it back. It'll come in. But that is the future. And you have to accept it. Can you throw some light on the implications on the amateurs? Uh, photographers? photographers? Yes. Uh, so I don't think it's going to you know, impact a lot of amateurs. When you say amateurs, it's someone who's experimenting, you know, it's not his really bl uh, bread and butter. So when you're experimenting, uh, I would say they're still starting out, but if they jump into AI photography, I call it AI photography, obviously they're going to jump higher than the other amateurs because what they create and if they get really good at it, like I'm showing you unretouched pictures, unretouched pictures. If I start retouching them like a photographer, toning them, grading them, color grading them, no one in this room will be able to say which is real, which is fake. 
I just have to spend time like a normal, see a normal photo would take me between one hour to 10 hours, depending on what I'm grading, right? So if on AI, if I take an AI photo and I start doing the same, you wouldn't know. So same way if an amateur starts using it, you know, he could either fake his way to the top, saying this is created by me, shot by me, and enter a Vogue, you know, or he can use it as a separate tool in his arsenal. But if you're talking about them being impacted monetarily, I don't think that's going to make much of a difference to them. It's going to hit the commercial guys very, very badly. It's going to hit, like I said, it'll start slowly with product, food, you know, um, small things like that, then you get into cars, then get into maybe uh, lifestyle, like I showed you those three girls in the field. There's nothing much, white kurta, pajama, anything, you, it's very common. There's, even in my pictures, you can see the embroidery, right? Who's, who's to say the embroidery is not created? Forget this, I know a person who uses AI to create designs, embroidery designs and garment designs and then actually creates those garments. So, you know, it, it's, it's, like a, it's like iPhone killed a lot of photography. But there are guys who stuck around, you know, there are people who changed their style used it for themselves. Like I know this uh, one boy who only shoots on the iPhone and he's such a big Instagrammer that companies pay him a couple of lakhs a month minimum just to go shoot something for him on the iPhone or anything. They don't care. So it's a niche. But yeah, I mean, traditional photography is going to have a tough time. And in, I, I always look at India in a different way than the world. Uh, like for example, Europe and America, I put them on a singular plane in terms of work uh, and culture and money because, uh, you know, India, I feel, is always a land of uh, various economies. You know, I always say the farmer's son today has got no education. Let's assume he wants to, the farmer's son wants his son to be educated. It's going to take him another 20, 30, 40 years. For his son to go to college, like a good A grade college, it's going to take another 50 years. By that time, the trickle down effect happens is 100 years. Till then, we've got other farmers whose kids are struggling. So we have a different type of economy. It's got layers and everybody survives. Maybe one of the reasons that India is still surviving compared to the world, because there they have a singular style of economy. It's not got layers like us. It doesn't have so many layers. Because here you go to a small town, they've, they're still not understanding what traditional commercial photography, when I go to give lectures to wedding photographers in small villages, it's very different from what we do over here. They can't imagine a wedding photographer can charge starting one CR. A poor fellow can't charge 20,000 also. So I think we have a long way to go. It'll be the top rung who gets hit always first, then the middle rung. Middle rung, oh yeah, so. <laughs> Yes, yep, yep. See, what happens is a lot of times you start uh, talking to AI and start understanding it myself. Then once you start understanding, then the AI starts understanding. Then you don't have to give that prompt only. Then it just gets into that zone on its own. So it, it's like you make your own channel, right? It's like chat GPT. I don't know if you use chat GPT. Once you start talking, it's got a history of what you're doing. It's the same way. And it, it's your, yeah, like I said, copying, it, see, also, I'm, uh, there's a big uh, case happening in the US where a lot of artists have come together and they have sued all these AI companies because all the AI is trained on someone's work, right? It has to show your pictures, your paintings for the AI to learn styles. Now, if I, so the other school of thought is when I go to an art school, an architectural design school, any photography school, they show the master's works, na? We look at the master's works. We learn from them. 99% will copy those master's works and never reach anyone. One person will learn from the master's work, make their own style. It's the same. No? It's the same. That's the big thing happening. So what has happened now is Adobe, you're talking about for stock photography. Adobe has now come up with their own AI called Firefly just day before or two days back. And what they put as a disclaimer is, ethically trained AI. They have been trained on our copyrighted images. So basically you create anything on their AI, you're not going to be sued. If I create something on another platform, like Leonardo, Mid Journey, there are so many other platforms, I can be sued. 
but if I've done anything that is on their platform, I cannot be sued. So, so you know, <laughs> that's going to be a battle for a while. Like, yeah. I use many, uh, Mid Journey is my favorite because I can just do it on my phone. I don't have to go anywhere. Uh, but there are others, there's Dali, there's Stable Diffusion, there are four or five of them. Leonardo is damn good, very, very realistic. But it always gives you three hands, four heads, four legs. So you have to tell it, I want a beautiful body, no extra hands, no extra legs, two eyes. So yeah, so like I said, it's not that easy. Some platforms are very easy. Uh, they just give you generic stuff, which is great. And if you're someone who doesn't want to create a style, who doesn't have already a style, maybe or doesn't want to create their own style or their own images, then uh, fine, you'll be happy with it. But like Brinda, you've seen my Superman series, right? Now, I did that in 2006. Now that was before AI, before proper computer. So, so there was a series I shot many years back. I think it should be here somewhere. Uh, and what happened was that we got a lot of models together. We got Superman clothes and stuff like that. And I'll just check if I can find it. And we did some crazy stuff in those days, in 2006. Now, today, in those days, 2006, I did this series where it cost me 10 lakhs an image. Because I had to get models, I had to get the clothes, I had to get a studio, I had to get sets made, I had to get props made. So I had a client, so we had a shoot for, we had 12 shots to do. We planned it over three months. Uh, we went around shooting the city also for the backdrops and stuff like that. Then we started shooting. Client ran out of money. I believed in the project. He believed in the project. We loved the project because no one had done something like that in 2006. We came back to the studio, white background, pe karke, Photoshop. Okay. So half the pictures look good, half the pictures look crap. Now I don't have to really do that. Na? But that's my style. No one has that style unless people have copied it. In 2006 when I did that, in 2010, uh, Skoda came to me. Okay, we saw this work of yours. We love it. We, we are launching the Superb the first gen, we want your Superman series for the Superb. So then I put Superman inside the car, you know, and I created the series for them. See, so it's the same with AI, you know? If I create my series, use it for myself, then like, you know, you mentioned it's your style. You, you, it becomes your work. Let me see if I can find that. Sorry? Yeah. What? Which one? Two rows above this was Superman series. Yeah. This is Henry Cavill here. I have not gone to New York to shoot him. <laughs> <laughs> this is AI. What you saw over here is not AI. <laughs> These are not AI. <laughs> See, that's the thing. You really can't tell after a point. Right now what is happening is so many images are AI and so many are not that sometimes you also can't make. I mean, I can't make out also like. In fact, my girl assistant is here, Pooja, she, she helps us in the office and she was making a presentation for me. And she said, see, these pictures are looking better than yours. I said, ha, thank you, abhi kya karu mein? <laughs> Because, see, even though I was selling the AI, but it had the resources. I told the AI, I want the best looking girl in the world. Stunning, fantastic, perfect model. Now here I have to pay the fa fantastic model. Let's say Lisa Hayden, if I have to pay, she's going to charge me five lakhs a picture. Shoot karte karte 50 lakhs, I can't afford the picture. <laughs> you see, so, it, it's like that, like some of them you, you wouldn't come to know also, and I'm not going to tell you now. <laughs> they, so every row has some picture of mine and some picture which is AI. Of course, not the aliens, all the aliens are fake. But see, I, I would never be able to shoot alien babies, no? It's, yeah. It's not actually AI, yeah, it's, it's a different technology, it's CG. So it's, that, that's actually created in a different technology, this is a different thing. See, CG is a very expensive technology, not accessible to everybody. AI is something, if you learn, you can do it on your phone, on your home computer, anywhere you're sitting. Anybody else's computer, just log in like Gmail and you can start working on it whenever you're free. Like for me, my biggest thing is when I, no matter how sleepy I am, 2.30 in the morning, 3 in the morning, I'll be in bed and I'll get an idea. I'll be like, shit, yeah. Try Marte. I wake up in the morning, something's generated. Like, you know, say, shit, it's not good. Okay, let's tweak it. So it's a big distraction. And I, like, I have diaries full of ideas for donkeys. Years. You know, all of us, 
we have ideas and I love to you see I carry a diary everywhere I've got four sections to every diary that I carry like you know personal ideas office ideas this ideas and then I keep dumping the diaries now with this all my ideas I'm like okay now I'm gonna start doing so there's a photographer called Tim Tatter I don't know how many people know he's a foreign photographer brilliant fashion photographer one of the best in the world I didn't expect it suddenly his insta is full of uh, AI and he's like there are ideas and ideas in my head which I wanted to create and some ideas shoots went for a toss they didn't work some ideas you know never could materialize because of the money so now I'm doing this so, so like I said for me it's a complete production house it's a studio it's a casting agency it's a stylist it's a makeup artist it's a designer you name it I don't need anyone it's my production house if I want copyrighted material I pay for it you know and I make it I create it it's mine like none of these pictures you will see anywhere on any other AI platform because I have copyrighted these I bought the software or whatever and I don't make it public because one I'm making it for myself two I'll present it when I'm ready for it like you know it's, it's like that so Um, Not now. Uh, maybe some other session where we'll connect the computer and we'll say, okay, log in and do this. So, uh, quick question. So, there's been some talk about uh, reporting about chat GPT, et cetera, where uh, it, it ends up lying, right? Basically, yeah. they, they ask a question and eventually just confidently yeah. say something that turns out to be just flat out wrong. Yeah. Have you managed to do something like this in an, in an image sense where you said... Like I said, four hands, two hands, and, and it six works? legs. No, make it lie or it lies on its own. No, no. You said do A, B, C, D, E, F. It said, here's an image doing A, B, C, D, E, F. And you're like, bullshit. This is completely not... Of possible. course, many times. It doesn't get it right all the time. See, that's the, that's the thing. That's what building your own style or building your own, you know, thing. It's not, like I said, you ask, let's say I say, give me an apple, right? It will give me an apple, but it won't be the apple that I want. It may not be red, it may be black, it won't be in the right place. You'll we'll just put it on a white background, I'll just put it on a green place. Or, you know, it may just have uh, the wrong color, maybe some other color. Sure, but that's just, it's, it's failing to read your mind. That's, that's what it's the same thing. It's like, basically, if you said, give me a green apple. It put a Volkswagen in front of you and said, this no, is a green apple. No, no. This is an extremely simple It thing. happened in the earlier generations. Now, I'm on version 5 in mid-journey. Dali is coming out with version 3 or whatever. All these guys are really insanely... Uh, so, your generic, th pro, you know, ask, it will give you. Your specific ask is something where I'm saying I want the model to wear yellow clothes, yellow this thing, driving in Sicily or, you know, the Eiffel Tower. Like I have pictures here where I've shot at the Eiffel. So, so you have to iterate, like you're saying. So you have to, no, you're not, you can, so, okay. Refine. That's a good thing. Refine. 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 Okay. So one is definition. As a photographer, okay, so as a photographer, let's assume someone comes to me and says, we want to do a fashion photo shoot, you know, for our brand, our clothes. You come up with a concept. So I'll think about it, okay, what are the gown? Okay, it's a gown, it's red, it's beautiful. Where do I want to shoot it? Ladakh, right? What is the best season to go there? Obviously when it's not raining or snowing, right? I want blue skies or do I want snowy area? That is as a photographer, I'm thinking all that, right? Let's say I want blue skies, sunny, you know, uh, skies or stuff like that. Okay, what do I want the flow to be? Do I want to be, you know, shining, white, sand or do I want it like a red, uh, you know, near the lake or whatever? Okay, now how is the model posing for me? Is she standing? Am I doing full lens? Am I doing mid shots? Am I doing close ups? What is the hair all about? See, as a photographer, when I get a brief, I have to think of all these things. Hair is tied up, it's got braids, it's got straight hair. Achha, who's the model? Let's say, like, I love Lisa. Okay, okay, Lisa hair. Will she look good in braids? Mm, will she look good in long hair? No, braids will look better. Okay, so now braids it is, right? But is it braids for six shots? No, I want different hairstyles. So we start planning as a commercial. So this is what I have to tell the AI. So everything I do in real life is going over there. Okay. And possibly helping out the gentleman's question here, how long do, do each of these iterations take you or refinements or whatever you want to call them, right? You, you, you change the description and then get a result back. That sort of, you know, how it, quickly that happens? You no, know, it depends on what you want. Like for example, I was trying to create in the other PPT, 
I'll, get, I'll, I'll show you here, like, uh, you know, I was trying to create an image for you guys. Uh, is it here, is it here, is it here? No, it's not here, it's in the PPT. I'll just put that on. So I was trying to just talk about the future of, you know, photography, AI, whatever. And uh, I tried convincing my guy that I need to have spaceships at the Taj Mahal. Does that look like Taj Mahal? No. Does that look like a spaceship? Well, okay, fine, you can say so. Like a bad 1960s ka beetle bus or something like that, mixed up into a spaceship. But it still has planes on top, so there's no spaceship technically. Like, why is the plane up there? So this is the random render it gave me when I said, now if I want to tweak it, which I tried for this session for a day, huh. I gave up. I said, nahi hota isko. So in some sense, it lied, right? Basically, you said, da, 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 the Taj Mahal. So this is obviously not the Taj Mahal. But, but it's, it's a render it's, of the Taj Mahal. Yeah, it's kind of sort of the Taj Mahal. I can say realistic photo of the Taj Mahal. See, that's how you have to talk. You understand? So it's like, like I said, it's like me creating an image for a client. I have to be specific. What is my light? So when I work on a, in my diary, when I work on a shot, I sketch out my shot, where the model is, you know, what the lighting is going to be, what is the time of the day. So like today morning, today where we were shooting, my team had to reach there at four in the morning. I reached there at 6.30 in the morning to do the setup. The shoot started at 9 o'clock. So, same way, there's no difference. So, it's basically as they say, you know, if you're trying to make a pact with the devil, you better be very careful about your wording. So, it's basically same it's deal here. It's the same. Here, it? <laughs> there is no difference. See, AI is a tool. A lot of people will, you know, talk about uh, it's not the right thing to do. But when the iPhone came out, it was the same thing. They are destroying photography. They have destroyed photography in a big way. But then it takes time for the good guys to stand out, right? Or the people who, like, you know, sustain, who have patience to keep going, to, you know, either learn, use it, and make it your tool. Otherwise, anything is going to take over and you're going to get destroyed. So it's like that. Okay, last one completely different question, which is, uh the purpose of art, if you will, is to evoke a sentiment, right, right? And perhaps you would subscribe to that same notion. Have you tried giving it, uh, whichever one you're using, right? The instructions not in the physical sense, but in the sort of yeah. emotional response. Yes. And did it work? How, uh, do it, it's, any? It's, it's, see, so it's really crazy uh, what it can create. So I'll tell you what. So I, I'm a touch a very positive person. I'm a real big believer in people and love. I mean, the, for me, Love transcends everything. When I say love, I mean it's not like personal love, it's love for life. Because I, I, for me, like everything living is love. There's no difference for me from an animal to a person to the rock to the painting. It just excites me. For me, everything is exciting. Like I, I wake up or I sleep excited because I, you know, through my life experiences, I realize it's one life and every day is my last day. That's how I live. I don't think about tomorrow, I don't think about yesterday. Uh, like, for my wife hates the way I live that way because she's like, how can you not plan for tomorrow? No, I say, no, I have a vision, I have a plan. I can't stress about it. Okay, that doesn't give me anything. What's gone in my past does not give me anything. It's an experience I need to use. What is today I need to have fun with. So what I did was, the first, one of the first things after that black and white series, I was trying to do, I just put love. And it came up with the with an insanely beautiful heart, with actually love painted in it in different styles, which was a literal meaning. Then I said love for this. And then suddenly it tweaked that same heart into something else. And then it kept, every time I tweaked it, so now I have a series of hearts, I wish I had it here, it's in my phone though, which is hearts made out of different elements, metallic elements, glass elements, my, uh, so I also, so on my mom and dad's anniversary, I said love for parents. It gave me this beautiful, and I didn't say heart, it just made a beautiful heart in gold, okay? One where my mom, if you want to call her, was kissing a baby. So it is an emotional thing, right? Then I went beyond and I said, I'm a Sikh, okay? So I said, love Sikh family. It's insane, it made a watercolor painting, I wouldn't be say a paint, but it's a watercolor drawing, sort of like a um, abstract illusion of a man and a woman, 
looks like a man with a turban and a woman with a dupatta. There's no face, no eyes, just the illusion and a small baby holding the hands. How insane is that? It's insane. So, at times, it really can amaze you emotionally. And, and, and I've seen some other people create some insane stuff with their emotional outbursts, if you want to call it. Like, you know. So, see, we have to understand one thing. AI is not magic. It's not like it just was created out of nowhere. Right? It's not like we were created out of nowhere. Let's assume for a minute, even if we were created out of nowhere, there's been an evolution. Let's say we, we just popped up as babies. The first two babies popped up. It still took us 30,000 years to be evolved to where we are, to understand art, to enjoy each other's company, whatever, right? Same with AI. Someone is sitting and teaching them the last 2,000 years of recorded vision, I mean, not visual history, if you say for what I'm doing, you know, emotional history, if you say chat GPT, the way it talks to you, the respect it gives you when it's talking. So I asked, I, what I did was with chat GPT is an AI model. It's a chat, basically, chat, and it's, a, it's called chat, GAN, something, whatever. So it's like learning all the time. So what I did was I gave it links to my work. I said, hi, I'm Vikram Bhava. These are links to my work. And it replied back, hi, Vikram Bhava. Your work is very good. And it actually described my style, which I'd never thought of which I will use in some other lecture, <laughs> okay? <laughs> and he said, it's nice to meet you. So, obviously it's been trained by a human being to be nice, to be positive, you know? And they've been learning for years. This ha started happening uh, in the known world in 2010. In the known world in 2015, Bill Gates had his first meeting. ChatGPT is by them. Was the first meeting he had with his own team on what they had achieved. This is what we know about and we don't know when they started. Like chat GPT-3, the last version, was trained up till 2021. Basically what it did was, it was reading up everything on the internet, not Google, everything on the internet everywhere till 2021. So if today I go and say, I want, let's say, a website made like this, like this, like this, like this, it won't take more than 40 seconds to pop out a website, all you need to do is go upload it and you have a website. It's that insane because it's taken all the learning. It's like you and I, let's assume one of us has written a blog, like, you know, on how to paint or, you know, my brush strokes are like this. And someone just goes and says, I want to learn a new form of art or painting which has got brush strokes like this. And it is going to find the answer somewhere in its record and pop it out for you. And it's insanely accurate. Insanely good. It's because, if, you know, this paper is here. If anybody wants, you can actually go through the answers that's given me. The positives, the negatives. Then I said, can you elaborate? Something else. Then I asked him something else. Something else. So, but it's being trained. It's being trained by us. There will come a time when it won't need us because it's already got so much data. That it's going to say, dude, you guys are wrong. I've read all your data. <laughs> Even art for that matter. There are, there are websites where you get music now. AI music. Um, who's this singer? Um, I think Asher or someone like that or one of these guys. He had a live show, a live show, and he, someone said, we want your duo with this singer. Okay, your old duo. He said, no, I'm going to give you a new duo with this singer. And that singer was nowhere around. He went online, he put his name down, he said, I want music in this fellow's name. And suddenly the music was playing at the back and no one would say it's not that guy. That guy called him up and said, and it's there on Google. I don't know the singer's name. We can just type it. It just happened last month. And that guy called up and said, dude, that music is insane. It sounds like it's me. It's better than what I do. Because it's learning. It's really, good. It's really interesting. Thank you for having me, guys. It's been fun. That, that wonderful session. Um, we would really like to thank Vikram for joining us here and, and taking us through this, this wildly exciting world that is here for all of us and, and helping us uh, understand it a little more. And thank you all so much for joining us here today.